going down i don't know the power points but you see the you what you have one combo but there is another one Boom, Sado. Sado has been sniped dude everything is getting blown up what a massacre hello and welcome to the beautiful map dim real deal in battle for middle of one this time we're gonna cast a 3v3 replay um yes you heard it right normally this map is being used for free for all matches almost exclusively but but it is not this day. we have isengard isengard and mordor combination versus isengard Gondor and Rohan. So four out of six factions are actually evil and I personally like this a lot because that means we're gonna see a lot of action. I genuinely cannot stand good against good matchups because it's, it is most of the time running around the settlements you know and fighting for the farms but if you, a couple of you a couple of the players have actually no walls and there is also gonna be threat on the enemy castle non-stop. So yeah it's a huge map i mean i will show you guys it's a it's a really big map you know look at this when you zoom out too much it's gonna actually go crazy but it's a huge map that's why it's being used almost exclusively for the free-for-all matchups but yeah i want to see actually how it's gonna work out for a um, 3v3 situation so rohan has building up a stable already very early into the game the uruk pit is not gonna be level 2 anytime soon i mean he needs one more uruk to get it to level 2 that's gonna be very important because this isengard and also this isengard they have two good factions, you know, in front of their fields. So they will need to recruit definitely multiple, multiple pikemen. Okay, so that's this team synergy right there. They are actually using Warchant and Eye of Sauron at the same time. That's really good. And now the Uruks from the Isengard play have 100% more damage. They have 50% more armor and 50% more combat experience. Long story short, they will get the chance to hit like a truck. But the Barzaka can actually deal with the situation no problemo. This Isengard has almost a Uruk Pit level 2, and this Isengard has already a level 2 Uruk Pit, so he will need to recruit definitely some pikemen because, as you can see, there are some Rohirrim on the field, and more of them will come. Master the Rohirrim, as Theodin King would like to say. In the meantime, the Gondor player is also going for the Gondor Knights from the stable. He has a good looking base. Very soon, he will also get a chance to purchase the upgrades from the Blacksmith to get those Gondor Knights become even stronger. And this Isengard's eco is not looking that good. So the key situation is here, definitely the Isengard player Kerkira, because in order to shut down the Mordor later on, and Mordor will have a lot of leadership, you will need the Freezing Rain. So um, double calf strategy is going to work out pretty nicely early mid game, but later on it's going to be harder and harder, and the point in which it's going to get shut down completely is the point when the Mordor player will get the chance to recruit a Nazgul or even the Witch King than your Gondor Knights. Slash or Rohirrim cannot play the game anymore. I personally would root for the evil side team in this situation. We have really lots of tools. Isengard, Mordor combination is already very strong. You will have insane amount of leadership bonuses. You can pretty much counter all the Gondor Knights plus the Rohirrim from the Gondor Rohan. And this Isengard, he needs to be rich. But he has the same settlements like his opponents. So he has no advantage. But again, the Gondor Knights slash Rohirrim can actually do a phenomenal job at the very beginning of the game they can creep a lot they can be used for the for the for the map control because they are mobile enough to hit and run all the time and we have also the heavy armor trampoline coming into the haradrims no problemo with the heavy armor plus war chant we can see them glowing they are tanky enough but very soon even this mordor is going for the pikemen you know <laughs> so the gondor rohan team they will have to fight against three pikemen from every single location on the map dim real deal armor is building up for the orange isengard player the same also goes for the uh, purple Isengard player and the green Mordor has Troll Cage plus a Haradrim Palace level 2. Uh, you know, that means Soldiers of Rune plus Trolls double counter against the forces of the good sides like Gondor and Rohan. You know, when you play with Gondor on your side with Rohan, you wanna. I would personally go for Elma and there are at the beginning of the game there are too many creeps on this map, right? There is, for example, a, a walk layer here. There are multiple troll layers on this map. So, long story short, getting your Eoma to level 4 to unlock the Horselord leadership is actually not very hard in early game. Now it's gonna be harder, and later on, when you invest into Eoma early on, you will have insane amount of additional damage and combat experience leadership, which is not gonna only make your own Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches stronger, but also your allies gonna net. And on top of that, we have also Eoma making bang for you, you know, the Outlaw leadership can grow your rage. Like, Eoma is a hero who is 100% worth it because he will definitely pay out. I mean, we have Armory now on the Rohirrim. 
Um, they are actually doing a good job defending this Isengard, so not a single orc can pass through this pathway. Okay, the first base rush is gonna happen. The Gondor Knights are going ham. Vorten has been used defensively. He have, yeah, he has shields too. So he has shields plus heavy armor plus forge bleed. So they are as tanky as they can potentially become. And on top of that, they have been war chanted from the blue Isengard player top left. So the Timson LG is very important. So they deal now on top of all the upgrades they got from the Gondor player himself. They also deal 50% more damage and they receive 50% less. Uh, Pikemen were not using the Porcupine formation. That means the punishment is not very good. And the Isengard player is doing a good job demolishing the buildings in time. That's very important. That's a very high skill level gameplay, by the way. All these six players are very, very strong players. They know how to play the game. They know how to deny the opponent player experience in power points. And look at this. Now, the Isengard player is going all the way down to the bottom right. The team synergy and the team uh, communication is very important in those, kind of in those kind of situations because he knows, for example, that the majority of the army is going to be pikemen as he's trying to counter the Rohirrim into Gondor Knights and his crossbowmen are going to hard counter the pikemen and now they are rotating. The good thing about the crossbowmen solo in compared to a combo battalion is the crossbowmen are just way faster. The second you combine them with Uruks or the pikemen you will lose so much speed and you don't have to do that. There is zero reason for the Isengard player to get actually combos on the field because now as he's fighting only against evil factions there is no calf he needs to counter and he has the chance to hit and run, engage whenever he wants to, disengage whenever he needs to. Lourdes is level 1 only, but it's fine. The Drummer Troll has to be sniped. Very smart move here from the Isengard player. Trying to snipe down the Drummer Troll before he can make it inside the castle of the Isengard. Very important unit. The best unit in the game when it comes to sport. The allied units. Heal has been used. Theoden King is almost level 4, by the way. The crossbowmen are running it down. And Glorious Charge, ladies and gentlemen, has been unlocked. There it comes, right now, right for ruin in the world's ending. And they will almost be immortals. And I remember the very first version, when I actually BFME came out for the first time, I remember I bought it from the store, guys. <laughs> and back in the day, on the patch 1.00, I believe, I'm not, you know, correct me if I'm mistaken. Oh, <laughs> but I said almost immortal. You are not literally immortal. But in the very first version I played, the description of the glorious charge was kind of crazy it wasn't nothing you know it was saying that theodin and his nearby allied cavalry units are going to be immune to damage they would be legit immortal during the glorious charge moment but in the following patches the ai or ea uh, kind of nerfed it which kind of makes sense because making your units immortal doesn't seem to be a fair choice to me even now the glorious charge is just kind of busted it's very very strong it can be game changing and all of that from a hero who only cost you 12 what happened here by the way it is gandalf oh look one combo look look he's you see the micro that's very good the, the witch king is coming they are microing around you see keep moving never give him the chance a level six uruk crossbowman horde very strong he's gonna use the easter light but the witch king is healthy enough to disengage from the situation oh no he shot him in the face the Witch King of Engmar is no more. Oh, I like that one, to be honest. That's very good. Gandalf, you know, <laughs> striking down the Witch King. All right, Elvin Wood, Tinted Land cover, very important. Um, this Isengard will now need the assistance from the Mordo player. The Drummer Troll has to come, but there is no Drummer Troll nearby. The Lord is also level 6, that means they have leadership. 60% more damage. The Rohirrim Arches, they are no match. Their biggest weakness is fire. You can see they legit can't damage the enemy combos anymore. They will literally get one-shotted every single time. I mean, there is Gandalf, but there is also Lords. You gotta watch out for this one. So you can see the movement and the team communication is very important. The good thing for the, for the left side team is that without siege weapons, the Gondor and Rohan are kind of safe. So the, the best solution to this for this problem for the right side team is that they have to keep attacking the only evil faction player who is the blue Isengard player Kerkira. So he will be the main target from the Isengard, Isengard Mordor team non-stop. Very smart move, you gotta be patient, you don't have to rush anything. You ideally wanna wait for the drama troll, but I would even wait for the second one, you know, very important. Because if you have only one of them, it's kind of doomed. Uh, the enemy can just target him down and the second he dies, you will lose an important chunk of leadership, which is not a good thing. So don't rush, just wait for the second. 
Trebuchet, <laughs> they are still a nightmare to deal with, but they have zero defense. There it comes. Oh, just like in the film, what is Saruman doing? He's going in! He's going for a trample. Lord has to cripple something. Gandalf is coming from downtown. He might go for the Easter lights here. Freezing Rain is active. I don't know whose Freezing Rain it is. Let me check, actually. Um, it is the Freezing Rain from Kerkira. That means all the leadership from the right side to Miss Gunners. Gandalf is popping off. Gandalf is going ham. Level 7 is unlocked. And all the attack has been successfully defended. Lourdes is dropping the sword. But he cannot fight this Gandalf. Lords, you might be strong, but that, that's a wizard, that's a Maya, that's literally an angel you gotta fight against and you have no chance. And that's what I was trying to say at the beginning of the game. Very important situation, the second the Isengard player Kerkira unlocks his Freezing Ring, all the existence from the Mordor player top right is kind of meaningless. He needs catapults to be kind of valuable in the situation because again, the next Freezing Ring is going to make him useless again. Now we're gonna see a counter attack potential. We have Saruman, almost level 6, Lourdes, level 2, the combos, they are not very highly leveled, but quantity might be also able to beat to quality. You need leadership here. I mean, they have also double Isengard. It means at some point of the game, <laughs> we might not see any leadership anymore, which is actually gonna favor factions like Gondor and Rohan, especially Rohan with the Glorious Charge, because Freezing Rain cannot shut down the effect of the slow resistance from the Oh, but Saruman has been sniped. Dude, everything is getting blown up. What a massacre. What a fiesta is happening. Trebuchet from downtown. The Easterlings are trying to take it down. We have seen Wormtongue from the orange paint Saruman. And he took the control of the enemy crossbowmen in combos. The Witch King is back on the menu, boys. Gandalf is looking for a chance. He was looking for an opportunity. But he's taking way too much damage. The focus is very important. In those kind of situations, what you gotta do, you have to take down the enemy heroes. And there is gonna be a Saruman who's gonna be a very tragic hero because if he gets a chance to steal your army you are messed up and of course on top of that you have Tyrion you need to take down but especially Gandalf the white wizard you cannot ignore him you cannot let him get into your lines and blow you up the oh but he got crippled and it's kind of gonna commit that's a question there is still a lord if I'm not mistaken he plays way too careful he's gonna use lightning sword from downtown very smart move, very smart move. Keep the distance. The Saruman is going down. I don't know the power points, but you see, the, you, but you have one combo. One combo, level 10. I'm telling you, look the utility and the insane amount of leadership more that is offering to his ally. At this point, as we are talking, there is I for 50% more damage, Drama Troll for 50% more damage, and Witch King for 50% percent more damage so Mordor all alone not even counting Lord's leadership from Isengard or Warchant Mordor all alone is giving the Isengard play 150 percent damage do you understand how insane this is dude that's why you need freezing rain but freezing rain you cannot use every single second that's not possible so Kerkira has it almost back up in about 20 seconds, he will get the chance to shut down Mordor once again. And in, during this cooldown window, you gotta make stuff happen. On the other side of the map, there is not much happening. It looks like all the six players are assembling to the same location as they are trying to defend or attack together. I mean, this is a small attempt uh, for a base rush on the Mordor, but it shouldn't be that effective. There are some Ballista, they know the siege weapons are gonna be, you know, still hitting like a truck. They don't care about your leadership bonuses. Mordor is not paying attention to the drummer trolls. And they're gonna be, he's paying attention, he's pinging, he's saying, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. We cannot lose the drummer trolls here. Okay, trampling. Lords is so tanky with the bloodthirsty ability. Or carnage ability, he will get in safety. There is, uh, oh, he's gonna die. Tyrion King is taking him down, but Glorious Charge is almost over. And if they get the chance to shoot him one single time, he will die. The Rohir matches are going down, the Witch King, Drummer Troll, and especially Witch King is very important in those kind of situations because he's so mobile, he can support multiple armies and squads pretty much at the same time, simultaneously, you know? But again, you are not playing against plebs here, you are playing against expert players, so they are paying attention to every single detail. And the Explosive Mind, the Explosive Mind, the Explosive Mind, Flashback. Boys, do you see this? There is like high ground, what am I doing? Defeated. End of flashback. Mind might be like a double-edged sword. It might help you quite a lot, but it might also mess you up big time. Fireball, Saruman, the wizards, dude. There is another Saruman coming. 
Oh, hit him special summon from the Gondor player. Okay, after the first couple of... You know, not couple of minutes. It's been a long game, actually. <laughs> but the speed of the game during the replay versus the speed of the game in real when you play it is kind of so different. I'm telling you guys. Okay, the Saruman has been taken now. So we have Eagles for the Gondor player, Nenya. So he needs, like, what? Around about 9 power points for the EOD. Um, this, Ro this Isengard player needs around 12 power points for the Balrog. This Gondor or Rohan player is actually still so far behind. Like, he doesn't even have Eagles uh, ends yet, nor does he have the um, uh, Cloud Break. Gandalf is popping off, he's getting inside the jeans. Level 9, ladies and gentlemen. One more level for the Nostra Crest, for the War of Power moment, which can be uh, like epic, you know? Like, imagine you get the chance to blow away like 50 Isengard combos, which is, you know, definitely possible in this kind of situations against double Isengard. Okay, Dunedain, the Isengard player, needs like 10 power points for the Balrog. Karkira, the blue Isengard, needs only 7, and that's it, yeah. I mean, the left side team is kind of leading in terms of the power point department, and once again, you know, that's the thing, what I'm trying to say. If you get army of the dead against a non-mobile faction like Isengard, and he has only combos, he cannot disengage you, right? He cannot run away, and EOD doesn't care about your leadership bonuses either. So even if you have like 500% armor leadership, it doesn't matter anything, because EOD is gonna still one-shot you. They are legit getting through damage. Heal has been used from Rohan to save the Saruman, whose level almost eat. In this version, he doesn't skill with levels, so he comes out with level 5. He has everything unlocked from the beginning. Oh, Gandalf is looking for a sh chance, for opportunity. But you gotta be careful. You don't wanna underestimate the damage, though. Like, they will still hit like a truck. The ends are going to war. It is likely that they are going for their doom. This Isengard has only a level 2 lords. He needs the assistance from the orange Isengard player. He needs some sort of help. But where is the... Oh, hold on a second. He was sieging the Rohan. He, Rohan has lost plenty of walls. Big commitment. Big attack. And look at this fiesta. We see ends. Rohirrim, Rohirrim Archer, Crossbowman, uh, Heroes, Gandalf. Like, everything is going just ham, you know, inside the Isengard. Okay, beautiful fireball. Killing those catapults. Aragorn is popping off with the Blade Master. Which can, has to be careful. But the army is getting kind of slaughtered from the e uh, from the from the left side team. There is Gandalf, but he's low, kind of low. He cannot really take a risk because the revive time of Gandalf is so long when he's level nine. When you lose him, you will have to wait like almost four to five minutes, which is a really long time in an RTS game to get him back on the menu. Beautiful blast, but it's not enough to get him to level ten yet. He needs around a quarter level to get the War of Power unlocked. Or never some Nazgul eventually. What is Mordor doing? I think Double Troll Kitch is kind of mistaking because you are fighting against so many siege weapons. I think the best, the better call is to get all the Nazguls and then get eventually some Mumma kills even, you know? Like Mumma kills could be nice, but definitely Catapults. I mean, uh, they are getting outnumbered big time. Glorious Charge has been used once again. Warchant on the level 10. They are trying to kill Lords. They will kill Lords, definitely. Lords is going to be taken out. It's good because now Ganov can actually pop off. Um, Rohir Max also thank you with the Glorious Charge. Eoma has been recruited very late. You can see he's still struggling to get level. Because... Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Who is Balrog is that? Dunedain. So, Balrog has definitely a chance to... Oh, there is another one! Boops out on your face! Hold on a second. Two Balrogs simultaneously? Let's see who's gonna be the, doing the job first. I wanna see this, actually. I mean, this guy might be defeated, but this guy might be defeated too. That's kind of nutty. Like, there are like Ballista invasion incoming. And finishing off the evil base is a bit harder in compared to a good face with the Balrog, but this Balrog has support. Like, there is lots of stuff. What is this Balrog doing? He's not going for the victory. I think he was not paying attention. Oh my goodness. Look, there are even some trebuchet from the Gondor player inside the base of Rohan. Uh, he won't be able to finish it off. Look, the eagle damage against the Balrog too. Eagles, dude, I'm telling you guys, the eagles are so strong in this game, you understand? <laughs> He's gonna use breath fire and kill the eagles too, but he won't be able to finish off the base. But in the meantime, this Isengard player is about to lose his castle, which means he will be the first player who will get shut down and defeated. Um, that's gonna turn the 3v3 situation into a 3v2 situation, which is gonna be kind of... Um, like a handicap, of course, for the, for the right side team. I mean, the question is how close... I mean, Gondor needs like three power points for the EOD, right? Three power points only. Um, the Rohan player here at the bottom left needs around about four power points for the EOD. 
the model player is far away like he has just the power points for the darkness all, that's all he can do and the reason for that is the trolls they cannot really participate in those kind of fights trolls are normally mighty creatures of middle earth there is no doubt about that but the problem is there is just too much mobility crossbow man fire power from the left side team eowyn screaming i am no man but it's not enough to one shot the witch king she's uh, he's gonna get in safety just barely the ends they are <laughs> gonna get burned they are getting crushed so hard dude like they cannot even play the game but they have now the land advantage they can now spam lands here left and right beautiful trample we see lands 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 all over the place beautiful glorious charge fireball <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy and by the way what, what happened i believe is gandalf sacrificed himself to save the bees because i've seen the balrog being chunked i think we have missed this fiesta i think he was trying to kill balrog but then balrog just turned and whipped him so when gandalf is trying to cast a spell and you whip him during that he will get one shot it everything is falling apart fiesta game i mean it's a 3v3 situation 3v3s are always involved with fiesta i think a couple of mistakes could be avoided from mordor i think he didn't want to go for uh, catapults but i think catapults are needed in this situation when there is a isengard who can shut you down your trolls are gonna become very weak you cannot play the game it's not the right call but gg well played anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did please don't forget to leave a like on this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future i will see you next time until then keep hitting like a track and as always stay beyond standards peace out guys